What's going on guys? So if you start looking into no code, you will see that there are tons and tons of tools out there. Here are 32 no code tools you need to try in 2022. And you have a ton of ton of tools. Here is another article, 41 no code tools to know in 2022. Here you have another big, and one thing you guys need to understand is that not all no code tools are the same. There are various levels to it. And some tools have more capability than others. Some tools allow you to do different things than others. And every single tool has a place and it should have a place in your own toolbox because they do various different things. And so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the different categories of no code tools so that you're able to pick the right tool for your job. We're going to take a look at the different categories. We're going to see the different tools that exist in each category. And I'm also going to be showing you an example. Some of the things that these tools in this particular category will allow you to do. We're going to log in into one of the tools and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. And this video is going to be helpful regardless whether you're just a beginner exploring no code uh, area or you're intermediate or maybe you're advanced. You've been working with no code uh, tools for a while. You are just not sure uh, of the existence of various other tools out there. And this is going to help everybody regardless of your level. Now, before we begin, if you like no code, if you want to build software, you're not technical, you don't want to learn how to code, but you want to build and sell software, or just curious how it works, make sure you smash a like on this video, leave a comment below letting me know what you think, if you have any questions, concerns, or you just want to let me know an opinion, a thought, you just want to share with me something. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel so you do not miss any future videos. Having said that, let's get started. Now, I look at no code tools in kind of five categories, okay? There could be more or less depending how you look at it, but I roughly look at it in five categories and that is what we're gonna be talking about today. So in the first category, we have integration tools, okay? And so these are very, very different. They're not really like no code apps what they allow you to do is integration so you have your no code app tool here and you have a third party service it could be anything it could be a google spreadsheet it could be sending an email it could be checking uh you know if you're uh if there's an intruder in your house if you're using something like that lots and lots of different services and examples in this category is zapier integromat which is now called make.com automate.io and ifttt and so here we are on make.com and i'm gonna sign in into my account and i'm gonna briefly show you how this works all right so here i am in my account and if we go into scenarios you will see the these automations so i have an automation here we click on it you will see that essentially what i'm doing is i have a webhook I have a, a, an event that's listening for events and if something happens, it enters a, a record into Google Sheet and you don't need to just do that. You can click here, you can add another module, you can say add another module and you have all of these modules that connect to various apps, okay? And there's going to be some apps that you are familiar with and there are also going to be apps that you may not be familiar with, but regardless of what you do, you will be able to find an app that you know you may be familiar with here maybe an app that you're working with and so this category is different than no code these are integration tools that allow you to to connect virtually any no code tool any kind of tool out there to another tool okay the next type of category are your web page builders okay and so these are one level above WordPress, Wix, Square, etc., etc. So if you are familiar with WordPress, this is a level above that, meaning that you are able to do a little bit more magic with it, but not, not a lot of magic, okay? So examples in this category is Webflow, Card, and Notion, okay? So I'm going to log in into my card account, and I'm going to show you exactly how sites tools in this second category work so here i am in my uh, webflow account i have here a starter site 
So here I have a sample site that I built for this video to just kind of show you what it works, right? It's basically a place where you can build a website, but you also have an ability to input data from a third party collection. So here I have a collection link, I have a collection list, I have uh, basically a list that I can open up, I have collection items, and you can tie it to uh, Google Sheets, you can tie it to a database, you can import data, but really, it's not about building apps here, okay? The most important thing here is building a website. Being able to get data from a third-party source like you can do with this tool is really a bonus because really this place is kind of, it's really about building a website. It's not about building an app. It's not, a, it's not about building any of that. It's about building a website with possibly some kind of externally linked data like I have here. So I have a bunch of articles here that's externally and I imported them here. And that is why we kind of have this web page here that's using that data. And so in this category, we have card, we have notion. These are nice tools, but they're by no means uh, no code builders. They're there and they're listed as no code builders because you don't need to use any code, but they're no, by no means actual tools where you can build a full featured, full fledged apps here. This now in the third category here, we have tools that allow you to quickly and easily build web pages by utilizing third party data. So like Google Sheets or you know some other source. And in this example, we have Airtable, we have Spread Simple, and we also have Sheets to Page, which is a very, very popular site where you can essentially have data in your Google Sheet and you can easily build a website. So let me show you an example. So this is Spread Simple and I have here a website. So if I open this website here, I can show you exactly what it does. And so here I have a simple website and all it's doing is pulling it up data from a specific Google Sheet here. So I can hit this button, I can edit this Google Sheet, I can change things around and then, you know, if I, if I don't like this layout, I can change this background image, I can change the headline, I can change um, the text here, I can change the button, I can do a lot of interesting things. And one thing to kind of uh, understand about this category is that there's no code here, but it's easier than the previous category. This, the, the sites in this category are also considered no code because they allow you to build websites without coding anything, but it's also by no means uh, tools here that allow you to build full-fledged apps, mobile apps, you know, web apps or desktop apps, nothing like that. But if you have data in Google Sheets or in another uh, spreadsheet and you want to build a website, it's really, really easy using the tools that I have listed here. And this is just, and this is by no means a complete list. There are lots of other tools here as well. Now in the next category, we have simple app builders that allow you to do more. And what do I mean by more? Well, they allow you to implement some form of logic inside your app. Not a lot of logic, not complicated logic, not comprehensive logic, but some logic. And that is why they're very, very popular tools for building quick apps using the data that you already have. Now, the examples I have here is Glide Apps, Bravo Studio, and Adalo. Now, for Adalo, I'm gonna put an asterisk here. And I'm going to explain to you exactly why. So if we go into Glide here, I have Glide, I open it up, and I already have a project that I was working on before. I try all of these different tools, and that is why I have experience with them, and that is why I can kind of share with you my thoughts and tell you which tool is better. And so here we have uh, Glide Apps, and we have the data editor. I can edit this data. We also have the layout, okay? So I can change the layout. I can, you know, I can go to, I can go in here to this first screen and I can change how it looks. I can make it a grid. I can make it card. I can make it list. I can make it table. And I can add actions, okay? So I can change what happens. I can determine. So title bar action, okay? What happens, okay? Show notification. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to, you know, maybe change something. I want to show a 
Yeah, I want to delete a row. I want to copy to clipboard. This is all logic, okay? And that is the kind of the beauty of the tools in this specific category is that they allow you to take data, they allow you to create the UI, but they also give you a limited way of doing a little bit of um, logic here, of, of something interesting. You can customize this app. So for instance, you can delete row, you can um, show edit screen, you can share link, you could sign in, you can trigger a zap, you can trigger a webhook, okay? This is very, very cool because webhooks is where you trigger your integration, your automation. And these are the things that you couldn't do in the previous category of tools. But still, right, this is not a, a very, very, you know, sophisticated tool for building uh, sophisticated apps. This is just, you know, this is just a little bit, right? You can create a new action here. Look at this. I can, uh, I can add a new action. I have all of this list here, but this is by no means a comprehensive list. Now, I also mentioned Adalo here, and I have an asterisk mark next to it. And that is because Adalo is a little bit more flexible. It's a little bit more sophisticated than Glide Apps or Bravo Studio or kind of the tools in this category. And that is because Adalo allows you to do a lot of things. It allows you to create, you know, various apps. But if you compare Adalo to the tools in the next category, where we're going to be talking about full-fledged tools to build all kinds of apps, to build any kind of app that you want, Adalo is very limited because Adalo is, is, is great for building apps very, very quickly, kind of like Glide apps, but with Adalo, you also have more flexibility that tools in this category do not have. And that is why I left Adalo in this specific category, but I put an asterisk mark because it's a nice tool and you can do a lot with it, but it's not by any means a comprehensive uh, no-code app building tool. Last but not least, we have the fifth category. And in this category, we have full featured app builders okay and so you have your no code tool you have your logic you have your components you may have external libraries you have your api connection you can connect to a third party service and in this category we have backend less we have thunkable we have bubble.io we have appgyver and we have flutterflow which is in my opinion one of the most powerful and popular app builders out there and so in this category, you can pretty much do everything here. You can do so many things, especially if you're using a tool like Flutterflow, where if you are limited by what you can do using the UI, you can always code something extra. So for instance, I have a Flutterflow uh, app here. If I'm limited by anything, I can simply go in here and I can create a custom function. I can create a custom widget or I can create a custom action that, you know, takes the user to a specific place, creates a certain uh, experience. And all of these things allow me to pretty much do anything that I want, if I need to, okay? If I am finished, basically, if I ran out of ideas using the kind of the built-in stuff, I can always code stuff extra. And Flutterflow is not the only tool that allows you to do that. You can create plugins with Bubble, uh, you can do a very, very similar things with AppGyver, Backendless and Thunkable have their own ways of doing it. But regardless of what you're trying to do, this last category is when I think about a no-code builder, a no-code tool to create apps, I am thinking about tools exclusively in this category. I'm not really thinking about you know, tools like Webflow, which is basically a glorified web page builder with a little bit of extra features. I am not really thinking about, you know, building a web page or anything like that. I am specifically thinking about tools in this category. Now, having said that, I don't want to take anything away from these other tools because every single tool, all of these categories, they bring something to the table. If you just want to build a website, you're going to be using Webflow. You know, using something like Flutterflow or Bubble is going to be overkill, right? You can build a website with Bubble if you want, but it's going to be an overkill. For a simple website, you're going to be better off using some of the tools in this category. If you have, you know, spreadsheet, if you have data in spreadsheet and you just want to create a simple website, 
from your existing data without you know just messing with the data too much without messing with templates without you know going crazy then yeah i would be using tools in this category i would not be building a, a you know an app a website app using bubble because you know yes you can do it yes it's possible but that would be an overkill as well now if i want to create a simple prototype i don't want to create a full featured app i don't want to create a comprehensive app with a million features i want to create a simple prototype then i'm going to be using tools in this category because i can easily pull data from google sheets or another source i can easily use this tool to build an app and i also have access to various logic features especially in adalo which allows you to you know to do a lot of interesting things with the data you already have so if you're looking to build a prototype or a very very simple app a web app especially a mobile app i would be looking into in this category now last but not least if you guys want to build a full featured app you i'm talking about an app that people build with code you know any kind of app that you may imagine any kind of app that's out there you want to clone an existing app you want to build a you know a comprehensive app with a ton of features you want to be doing api calls you want to be you know you want to have your own logic you want to maybe build your own custom components uh you maybe want to connect to built-in libraries or you know write code for your existing library that is gonna you know do some kind of custom logic inside the app then this is the category you want to be looking into any of these tools will allow you to build a full featured app and really i have to say that flutterflow is a tool that i've been using lately and i've been making lots and lots of videos about this tool and in my view flutterflow is probably the most customizable tool out of all of them because flutterflow is built on top of flutter which is essentially a tool written in the dart programming language where you can pretty much do anything that you want and so you can think of flutterflow as a ui builder on top of a very very robust tool that allows you to do pretty much anything that you want regardless what kind of app you're going to be building if you're looking to build more than just you know a mere prototype something a little bit more serious something you're going to be charging money for something that you know is going to be maybe seen by thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of users you want to be exclusively looking in the app builders in this particular category and really all of this on the list and really all of these tools on this list are gonna suffice and so hopefully i've cleared up some of the misunderstanding when it comes to no code tools because no code really means a lot of things to a lot of people and i really hope uh, you've gotten a handle on the kind of tool you may want to use for your specific project for your specific idea and this tool needs to be perfect because the last thing that you want to do is pick a tool that is not going to be enough for building the kind of project the kind of app the kind of site that you want and also you do not want to pick a tool that's going to be an overkill for the kind of project for the kind of app for the kind of site you may want to go out and build after all picking the right tool for the job is half the battle right there and so that is all that i wanted to talk about today i really really hope you've gotten value here let me know in the comments if there's a tool i didn't cover and you're not sure in which of the categories that tool should be in i will help you out also if you have any questions or concerns leave them below i will try to help you out as best as i can if you enjoyed this video leave a comment letting me know that it's highly highly appreciated don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos such as this one thanks a lot for watching and i'll talk to you in a future video